Burials at sea are part of our seafaring tradition and naval folklore, but in recent years they've become much less common, although they're open to everyone. In the UK, there are about 10 a year, and most of them take place off the Isle of Wight. But the coroner there has raised concerns that bodies and body parts, which are often washed up on the island, might be from the burial ceremonies. Investigations into the identities of the deceased are costing the authorities thousands of pounds, and the Home Office is even considering introducing DNA records for those being buried at sea. Here's James Clayton. Every now and then, a beachgoer on the Isle of Wight gets a little more than they bargained for. Over the years, numerous bodies and body parts have washed up on the shores of the island, puzzling many, including the coroner here. Ross Finden is the online editor at the Isle of Wight County Press. He's reported on many of the discoveries. We've got examples here from the last 10 years, but it stems much further back than that, probably going back decades where coroners have had to deal with it. So this case from 2005 is probably the biggest case on the island uh, of this kind. The body was found by a beachcomber in Bryston, walking along, discovers a body entirely naked except for its socks, um, really leaving um, police and investigators mystified as to, to where the body had come from and the circumstances that had led to it being discovered in, in the beach. In this case, just like many others, the coroner speculated that the body had come from a burial at sea but could that really happen? Just south of the Needles is where almost all of the UK's burials at sea take place. Newsnight has been given exclusive access to one such burial. This is John Lister, and he's conducted 60 ceremonies here. When the deceased comes into our care, we normally try to get out to sea at the first available opportunity. There's an area two and a half miles south of the Needles that's deemed as being the most suitable part on the south coast for a burial at sea. It's unaffected by tides and fishing and dredging and trawling. As we reach that area, the boat was slow. We often play a little music then, uh, and often it's the case that we'll play Elgar's Nimrod. We're overlooked there by the monument to Tennyson on the southern cliffs of the Isle of Wight. So we will often read Tennyson's Crossing the Bar. But such a tide as moving seems asleep, too full for sound and foam, when that which drew from out the boundless deep turns again home. Then there's the actual committal itself, which is over in the blink of an eye. Then the mourners might like to put some flowers on the surface of the water. Uh, the, the vessel then, or the boat, will do a 360 degree circuit around the point of committal and the flowers, uh, and then we will propose a toast. John is passionate about burials at sea and insists that the processes in place mean that it's impossible for bodies to break free once they've been committed. Within the coffin is a world mesh cage contained within the wooden confines of the uh, coffin. That world, world mesh cage is then attached to concrete, the concrete weights. Um, th there are two inch holes in the uh, world mesh to allow a certain amount of marine life in. So, you know, that, that is why it's, it's unfeasible that any, any large body part would, would escape from a burial at sea. If it's done properly. If it's done properly. But the assurances haven't convinced the coroner here, who has linked some of the bodies being washed up to burials at sea, despite the lack of evidence in certain cases. In this case, the corpse was so decomposed that some thought it might be the body of Lord Lucan. 
The evidence is, is very weak. You could be looking at a, a sea burial or in extreme circumstances you could be looking at a murder where a body's being disposed of at sea, you know, tossed overboard uh, uh, and is just left to, to the tides. The problem is that it's very difficult to identify a heavily decomposed body. And if you don't know who it was, how do you know where they came from? And if you don't know where they came from, how do you know they were buried at sea? I've asked the coroner for an interview, but they've refused to even talk to me. I've requested files on relevant cases, but once again, the answer was no. It makes it very difficult to know what's really going on here. It's because of the uncertainty around what exactly is being found on the coast of the Isle of Wight that the Home Office is considering bringing in mandatory DNA tests for anyone being buried at sea. The hope is that if introduced, it will end the controversy and speculation. I welcome it. It can only be good. If some funeral directors do sort of cut corners and what you say, if there's any truth in what you say, then uh, you know, a DNA testing will make them pull their socks up. It now looks likely that a decision will be made in the autumn. And if DNA tests are given a go ahead, perhaps we'll finally get an answer to what really is turning up on the island shores. <laughs>